Ooh, should I start now or later on? Maybe I'll start right now. Okay. Mic check, mic check. Let's get started on the case study of the Samachan man. Before I start this uh, podcast style uh, investigation, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to give out that I'm going to mess up so many lines. Maybe I even stutter a little because I'm still learning to talk. So English is not my you know preferred language. So I'm going to mess up a lot of things here. So I'll try to be you know. i'll try to be perfect at least uh, to a certain extent so bear with me anyway let's start let's start this good evening hope tonight that one of the state's most enduring mysteries could finally be solved with the unearthing of the so-called summerton man his remains now in the hands of forensic detectives who will use cutting edge techniques to try to finally determine who he was and just maybe in decades of public intrigue <clears throat> hello guys welcome to my channel criminally insane a new update on the somerton man's case he has been taken out from his grave to do a detailed dna analysis with the new technology Uh, don't ask me how it works i have zero knowledge about that but yes the entire world is waiting with hopes to know the identity of the man i mean it has been almost 70 years this man has been buried with uh, no name written on the tombstone uh i am on 50 50 side of finding out his name who knows the samaritan man wanted his identity to die along with him and never wanted to be found out So for those who don't know about the incident that happened in Australia and the strange investigation that took place let me refresh your memories or you know tell you a new story here It was the start of the morning on uh, December of 1948 in Adelaide Australia on one of its beach called Somerton a man lays down on the sand with his head uh, resting against the rocks as seen in this picture uh, he hasn't moved for almost a day So people find that there is something not right here and call the cops. The cops arrive and examine the man. But the man had already been dead for a while now and so our mystery starts at this point. So first of all no one knew about this man who he was what did he do and what business he had at this beach. They took the picture on spot and went around the beach and nearby houses uh, you know to ask about if they knew him but they had no luck. So first thing the cops wanted to do is uh, you know preserve the crime scene and investigate the cops. Right away they studied the features of the man and what he was wearing. The Samaritan man is uh, what I'm going to call him from now on. He bore an uncanny resemblance to uh, to a British origin though he was wearing a brown double-breasted jacket which reported of an uh, American tailoring. This may prove that he was an immigrant settled in one of the states of America. Samaritan man was a uh, aged around 40 5 feet 11 inches tall with gray eyes and with ginger colored hair the hairs were well parted and his face was gle- and his face was uh, clean shaven right off the bat he doesn't look like a normal dude he must be either a man belonging to a higher class or maybe he works for a military as they are always disciplined and keep the professionalism in the way they look now underneath the coat he was wearing a pullover and a white shirt He also wore a colorful tie. Also there is a minor changes of tie wearing styles throughout the world so somewhat a man's style hinted more towards a uh, uh, American one further proving that he was of American origins. On his ears uh, a new cigarette was sitting and on his uh, right collar there was a half used cigarette uh, resting on it. Possibly may have been fallen off from his mouth. Even though his chin was closer to the cigarette there were no burnt marks of any sort my theory is that uh, the cigarette might have been burnt out and uh, later which led to the falling out of his mouth and causing no burnt marks on either of his collar or on his skin next thing the cop uh, notices is that his shoes are neatly polished even though it's a sandy beach there are no single sand grains present on the shoe uh possibly the chances of someone carrying the man and placing him there maybe may be true now the first strangeness of the somerton man can be noticed here all the tags on his clothes are neatly snipped off meaning there are no traces or uh, possibilities to track down who made these clothes 
it has if someone or maybe i don't know someone man himself wanted to vanish without a trace of his identity another strange thing they find is uh, a pack of army club uh, branded box inside the box they find canister cigarette now if you don't know that uh, army club are cheaper than canisters i mean canisters brand could only be offered by the rich people at that time so keeping the canisters in an inferior box by somerton man is really mysterious maybe he was trying to pull off that he was poor but there is again a, there is again a follow up question on why let's go through some of the items found in the dying man's pocket a bus ticket to st leonards a train ticket to henley beach two combs a handkerchief a half full pack of chewing gum the necessary items like wallet money or any sort of identification that would prove his existence were completely vanished so what's going on here a person dead under mysterious circumstances and no one knew who he was i mean they were going to print his photo on newspapers in hopes uh, someone would come to claim his body at that point the cops thought that uh, somerton man committed suicide there was no foul play involved in crime scene there are no extra footprints or signs of someone dragging a body but i must say it was a busy beach and uh, there must have been in uh, you know there must have been a contamination of evidence there who knows it was in 1948 and it was hard to restore any sort of evidence that told cops sent the body for an autopsy while uh, they questioned people for possible sightings or any strange thing occurred uh, they saw during their uh, stay on the beach first to be questioned will of course be the first person to notice the body it was john leons he was on one of his morning swim when he saw the man slumped against the wall what raised his curiosity even more to go closer and investigate even more because uh, apparently this was the second time that mr leon seeing that man in the same place and in the same position the previous day he and his missus were on an evening walk on the beach around 7:30 and they both saw the man and he really stressed that he had not changed his way of lying that entire evening missus leon also commented saying quote on quote look at the way the man is slumped to which her husband replies jokingly that he would report it to the police At that time they both thought that the Somerton man was drunk and wasted. But there is a key moment in the investigation. Mr. Lyon noticed that uh, Somerton man slightly raised his right arm up to a couple of inches and then dropping it uh, completely down. This he did it several times according to Lyon's statement. That means the Somerton man must have been alive the previous night. But still it adds to the mystery what was the somerton man doing the whole night in that beach i mean by the arm movement he definitely must have been sick but still he could have asked for help but uh, he did not one more thing leon kept on changing his statement on whether the man he saw the previous night is the same he saw the next morning he went back and fro finally landing on statement quote on quote i would say that it was uh, definitely the same person Uh so this is not the end of witness sightings many have given statement which are either supporting each other or contradicting each other before we further talk about the witness confessions let's look at the autopsy report of the somerton man what really happened to him how did he die back in the hospital they bring in the somerton man's body and started looking for usual stuff like most common way of killing a person was he beaten to death or was he poisoned Pathologist at that time Sir John Cleland began to examine his body and found some abnormalities in man's uh, physical condition. First of all his spleen was swollen to 3 times its size. The liver was also not looking good. One thing that John noted that even if the poisoning was the reason for his death it doesn't explain about his uh, spleen and liver condition as the poisoning doesn't cause the enlargement of the organs. Only reason that explains the issue here is the Somerton man must have had uh, health complications in the past but john doubts this man being unhealthy this is due to the spectacular fitness that somerton man possessed he had a broad shoulder small waist and what stood out was how well built his leg was he had this muscular legs and wedge shaped toes that can only be described as belonging to a ballet dancer ballet dancers train every day and most of the time they use their legs to perform uh, various complicated acts so they need a very strong legs somerton man's leg matched these conditions 
So looking at this John thought that uh, there is no possible way such a well fit man could have any health related issues then there was like other findings there was pooling of blood near his ears and uh, neck back when you look at how Samartan man's body was positioned if the blood stopped circulating it would most of the time always end up near feet region due to gravity this also speculated that uh, Samartan man died in different place in different position maybe upside down and was placed in the beach later on so every doctor were blaming uh, poisoning for his death uh, then that time there came a uh, shocking news <laughs>